Hello! Ah, Easter eggs. Those exciting and pointless messages and features that people hide in video games and that. You see loads of elaborate ones these days, but 25 years ago they were scarce. This is partially due to the limited memory of the computers of the time, and partially due to everything having to be completed really quickly before a red-faced man in a grey suit shouted at everybody. Anyway, here's some. For some reason, people thought it was funny to hide references to illegal drugs in games mostly played by children. Oh, the hilarity. For soft drugs, Odin Computer Graphics' beautifully animated whimsical arcade adventure Heartland has what is quite obviously a cannabis leaf in the background. For harder stuff, Mastertronic's Spain-imported track and field rip-off Video Olympics has a Coca-Cola style logo overwritten with the word cocaina, which is indeed Spanish for cocaine. Possibly a reference to the fact that the original recipe for Coca-Cola contained cocaine? Maybe. Or maybe it's just a stupid joke. We may never know or care. In order to break into a basic program on the original 48k Spectrum, you pressed Shift and Space, which would let you fiddle with the code and stop it working properly. Most games weren't written in basic, so you didn't give it any thought when playing stuff. But, game developer Icon Design Limited played about with this idea if you try and break into the menu screens of a couple of their games. Weird protect a space colony from giant ants whilst growing mushrooms game, Colony, pretends to reset into a mocked up version of Commodore 64 Basic, hilariously called Commode 64. Doomed Spaceship Simulator Rescue pretends to reboot into a Tating Einstein, an obscure computer often used to program games for porting to other systems. I don't think this happens with any of Icon Design's other games, but I didn't check because I got bored. In The Last Ninja, a heroic assassin killed an evil shogun in feudal Japan. Then in the sequel, he had to do it again in modern-day New York for some reason. Now, Last Ninja 2 is widely considered one of the greatest games for the Commodore 64. Personally, I thought it was a bit crap, as you basically spent the whole game trying to avoid enemies from a confusing isometric perspective with weird controls that got you stuck on furniture and facing the wrong way every 20 seconds. But hey, the music was great! Anyway, after you've spent about 15 minutes running around enemy combatants or killing them by constantly repeating the same move, you leave an office environment and jump onto a window ledge. From here you get to see three things float past. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's actually Superman! It's a vaguely interesting easter egg and now we can all die happy. What? First, there was The Way of the Exploding Fist, an excellent one-on-one -on -one fighting game with precise controls loosely based on the arcade game Karate Champ. Then came the sequel, which expanded things into a jerky and dull side-scrolling action game and criminally turned the combat into a horrible, jelly-feeling mess with dubious collision detection, despite retaining the same move set. But on the plus side, the title screen of some bloke kicking over a small purple table is hilarious. As well as the scrolling adventure, a combat practice subgame was included where you got to flail about ineffectually against a computer opponent or another player. It was so bad that even the artificial intelligence gets bored and just lets you kick it to death after a bit. But we're only interested in the third practice background, this one, where the graphic artist has been a bit clever with a hidden image. Can you see it? I bloody couldn't until someone pointed it out. Here, let me do the same for you. It's a naked lady! Or possibly a lady in a swimsuit, you can't really tell at that resolution. But either way, that's a cleverly hidden and slightly naughty easter egg. And finally, my absolute favourite easter egg. Enterprise was a rubbish space-based shooter for the Atari ST and Amiga computers. It had rubbish graphics and rubbish sound. Only one UK magazine bothered reviewing it, and they gave it 49%. That's because it was rubbish. However, there is something vaguely interesting about the Atari ST version. You see, there's a file on the disc called warning.dat that contains the recorded speech used in the game. However, it also contains an extra sound. 
this, in fact. Now, when played backwards, it sounds like this. Enterprise is rubbish. Did you get that? Here it is again. Enterprise is rubbish. Yes, that is literally one of the game's designers telling you in no uncertain terms that Enterprise is rubbish. Well, I appreciate his honesty, but I don't appreciate his game because it is indeed rubbish. So there you go. There's several Easter eggs from some very old games. If you know of one I haven't mentioned, be sure to drop me a line. Or alternatively, and far more likely, completely misunderstand what an Easter egg is and what this video is about, and send me details of cheat codes or that hidden scarecrow boat in Arkham City or something.